everyone, and welcome to Zoo Miami's The American Bankers Family Aviary Wings of Asia. Today we will walk along some 400 birds, representing nearly 85 species. Our path will take us along a tree-covered trail over bridges and past cascading waterfalls. At 54,000 square feet, this is the largest open-air Asian aviary in the Western Hemisphere. Nearby, we can dig for fossils at the Dino Dig, which ties in nicely with what we will learn here about the relationship between dinosaurs and today's birds. Our first glimpse into an Asian waterway, and we can spot giant Thai catfish that are native to Southeast Asia and are considered critically endangered due to overfishing. They can reach up to nine feet in length and weigh over 600 pounds, as well as the iridescent shark, which is native to the rivers of Southeast Asia, here, we also learn that globally, 3 billion people get their protein from seafood. As demand grows each year, so does the seafood harvesting. Unfortunately, often ways to deplete the natural populations, damage sensitive habitats, and pollute ocean waters. 90% of fish populations are fish beyond their sustainable limits. One of the most important and easiest things we can do is ask, do you serve sustainable seafood? This helps build demand for sustainable products and encourages businesses to improve their sourcing information. The Seafood Watch Consumer Guide makes finding sustainable seafood and sushi quick and easy. It rates seafood products as best choices, good alternatives, or avoid based on the environmental sustainability of how it is harvested. I always find it good practice to promote the zoo's conservation efforts and mission statements. So now getting back on track, before exiting the building, we are asked the question, what is an avian dinosaur? Well, of course, the answer is a bird. Paleontologists call the birds avian dinosaurs. This is how they distinguish birds from all other dinosaurs, with avian meaning bird-like in Latin, and all other dinosaurs are, of course, labeled non-avian. And we are asked to keep this in mind as we explore the exhibit. So most modern birds are built for flight. Hollow bones, fast metabolism, and wing design are factors. Nearly everything about birds is adapted for flying. Their bodies are strong and compact. Their bones are hollow. The breastbone is wide and flat to carry the large muscles that power their wings. Strong, springy legs provide the push for takeoff and absorb the shock of landing. Bird wings are modified arms to spread wide for flying and fold away when not in use. Bird tails consist of a short column of tail bones that supports a long fan of tail feathers. Flying takes a lot of energy, so frequent flyers tend to eat often and feed on high energy foods such as nectar, insects, and animals such as fish. Scientists think that ostriches and other flightless birds evolved from flying birds, which is why their bodies still have some of the characteristics of flying birds. And of course, as we noted before, they are the closest living relatives that we have of dinosaurs. People look at birds and think they're so gentle and sometimes even used as symbols of peace, like the dove, for instance. In reality, pound for pound, as vertebrates, they are probably the most aggressive of vertebrate animals, but they also play important roles in making an ecosystem complete. And as we walk through this aviary, we are seeing a representation of an Asian wetland. Wetlands are low-lying places where the soil is always soaked. The plants and animals that live in wetlands are highly adapted to these unique habitats, which include mangrove swamps, salt marshes, freshwater marshlands, lake shores, and river and stream banks. As Asia's human population increases, Wetlands are being drained and developed at an alarming rate, leaving the resident birds and animals high and dry. So it's no surprise that wetland birds are built for the wet life. Their sharp eyes and strong beaks help them find and catch slippery fish. Web feet are efficient paddles for some, while long legs act as stilts for others. Extra long toes spread weight so some birds can walk on soft mud or even on water plants. Not many trees grow in the wetland soggy soils, so branches are at a premium for nesting birds. White-throated kingfishers solve this problem by burrowing to build their nest in banks high above the water level. And if we listen as we walk through to what the birds say, 
They communicate with voices, feathers, and even tools. Here in the aviary, we can hear them singing and calling. They do this to declare their territories, beg for food, check on each other's whereabouts, and warn of danger. In addition to using their voices, some birds create whistling sounds with their feathers as they fly. Others use their beak or a stick to drum on hollow trees and other surfaces to help them communicate, including tin roofs. In forests, it's often easier for birds to hear potential mates than to see them. Many birds living in dense forest canopies have simple, repetitive, and piercing loud calls. Even before they are out of their egg, baby birds can call to each other. This helps to synchronize hatching so no one is left behind. Just before they hatch, chicks break into the air sac at the blunt end of the egg. With this lung full of air, the chicks may make the first of many peeps to come. Birds that normally live within a social group often mimic each other so that others in their group will recognize their calls. This may be why captive birds such as parrots mimic their keepers and learn to talk. These birds may consider the people to be part of their social group. In this aviary, you might notice some of the giant looking palm trees. These are called telepot palms. This species of palm is native to eastern and southern Sri Lanka and India. It can live up to 60 years before bearing any fruits or flowers and die shortly after. This is why it earns the nickname the century palm. It is the largest flowering plant with branched inflorescence, meaning a group of cluster or flowers arranged on a stem that is composed of a main branch or a complicated arrangement of branches. The leaves of this palm can reach up to 16 feet. Game birds are an important part of Asia, with unique species found in different areas and regions. Jungle fowl, which are unique to the Oriental region, are the source of all domesticated chickens. Green peafowl are found in Java, and the Indian peacock is spread throughout India. Pigeons are a common sight and come in a wide variety. Pheasants live throughout the forest of Southeast Asia and islands of Indonesia. However, surprisingly, parrots here are found in small numbers, unlike other tropical regions. In the forests of Asia, we can find many species of woodpeckers. Loud-voiced tropical birds are characteristic, like barbettes, coppersmith birds, rollers, and bee-eaters are common in India. The latter can also be found in the Malay archipelago and beyond. Familiar birds in India include Indian grackles, house crows and the common mina. Many others are widely distributed, including drongos, flycatchers, tailor birds, and bulbuls. Other birds common throughout this region include herons and white cattle egrets. Species like gulls, cranes, and spoonbills are confined to the western parts. Among cuckoos, the brain fever bird, an Asian hawk cuckoo that takes its name from the suggested effect of its repetitive cry, is well known. Eagles, osprey, falcons, hawks, kites, and buzzards all occur here. In the western part, vultures are numerous and are found even in towns. Water and wood kingfishers are represented by many species, as well as the hornbill, which shows its greatest development in the oriental regions. Here we learn about the bird of paradise in what is called a dance of feathers. The bird of paradise is arguably one of the most beautiful birds. Their spectacular plumage and elaborate courtship dances set them apart from all other species. Adult males have plumes, frills, caps, quills, lacy feathers, and or skirts, with tails that may look like expandable fans, whips, twisted wires, and more, depending on the species. Those tails may look beautiful, but they are not very helpful for flight. Instead, they are meant to help the male show off any number of fantastic dance moves to attract as many females as possible and to outdo rivals. During the late 1800s, some bird of paradise species were almost wiped out because of the fashion of using their birds' feathers to decorate hats. Up to 50,000 skins were exported each year. This practice was finally stopped in the 1920s when all birds of paradise were protected from export. And with that concludes our trek. So thank you for joining me 
on his tour of the Wings of Asia at Zoo Miami. Hope everyone enjoyed the beautiful birds. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone. <laughs>